it's your lucky day because today I'm going to talk about 10 study habits you should implement right now. Hey there, I'm Subaram Nani, the guy who's mad about medicine just like you. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the button below and also follow me on Instagram where I post some amazing medical content, some interesting quizzes and exciting challenges and giveaways. You can find the links to all of this and everything else mentioned in this video down in the description box below. So let's go. So let's get straight to it. Number one, having a study plan with a bird's eye view. Now why you should have a study plan with a bird's eye view? With a bird's eye view, I mean having a study plan which spans over months or weeks. So like opening a calendar and writing down what to do when. So for example, if someone asks me, okay, have you done this topic in surgery? Oh, let me look at my timetable or study plan or this is actually scheduled for September second week. So having this bird's eye view helps you lower your anxiety levels. If you don't have a bird's eye view, you might constantly think about when do I have to do this? I have so much left. But if you have everything planned and you have a bird's eye view that, okay, I'm going to do surgery here. I'm going to study medicine this month. Just having this approximate plan or ap approximate days where, okay, from this week to this week, I'm going to study this subject helps you calm down and lower your anxiety levels. So this is the first habit you should implement right now and you'll see you'll worry so much less and stress less and focus more on studying. Next on our list is having a daily to-do task list. Now why a daily to-do task list? Because I just told you have a bird's eye view. Now these both are important. While a bird's eye view helps you have a goal in your mind and focus more towards why are you studying, a daily to-do list tells you what you need to study right here, right now. Now you might know that, okay, I'm going to study surgery for two weeks, but what do you have to study in surgery? What do you have to do today? What do you have to do tomorrow? So you should have this daily task list and plan out everything. So you know exactly what to study when, if you have a complete plan, then you'll be good to go and always, always overestimate the time you'll take to study a topic. For example, you think you'll finish uh, the topic liver, let's say, in one and a half hour. Just keep two hours for it. Because what if, you know, something happens or what if it takes you more than one and a half hour? So you'll have this cushion half an hour and you can plan your task accordingly. And if you happen to do it in one and a half hour, well, then you have gained 30 minutes and you can add more tasks to your time. So it actually saves time. So make sure you allocate more time that you usually think you can do it in. So that's a good way to make a daily to-do list. Number three on our list is making a topic-wise study plan and not a time-based study plan. So what I mean by this is, usually students and myself included, I have committed this mistake. How do we plan? Okay, from three to five, I'm going to study. From five to six, I'm going to take a break. From six to 7.30, I'm going to study. Half an hour, I'm going to take a break. While that's fine, but life happens and you cannot always do whatever you want at the same time you have prescribed it in. So let's say you prescribe three to five, I'm gonna study. Well, lunch took you till 3.30 p.m. and now you've actually wasted 30 minutes according to your study plan and that adds to the anxiety and stress levels. What if you just decided that I'm gonna study the topic pancreas today? Now that's up to me, I'm going to study from 3 to 5 or 5 to 6 or 5 to 8. That's completely up to me. Just I have to study and finish this topic. This is my task for today. So rather having a time wise task list, have a topic wise task list and you'll see the benefits of it almost instantly. If you absolutely have to allocate time, do it. But as I said, always allocate more time that you usually think you will take. So that way you'll have your stress and anxiety levels low and doing the tasks will be much more efficient and better. Number four on my list is reading the topics before you go to class. Now some people hate going to lectures and some people love. Now what is the difference? Why do people hate going to lectures? For them it's more like they are learning the topic or they are seeing the topic for the first time. 
while for the others who actually love going to the lecture it's like they are having a discussion or they are revising but why is it so because those people have a habit of reading or at least going through the topic list or the subheadings of the class they are going into so let's say you're going into a class of ovarian tumors and the teacher gives you all these names you have surface epithelial tumors um, you have germ cells tumors there is krukenberg tumors and you're like teacher this is this is too much like i cannot comprehend this information first time in my brain i need some time and half an hour passes by and you've already lost it and the next one hour of the lecture is just you procrastinating and thinking about something else and also wasting your time because you're not actually gaining anything from the lecture so what should you do just having a topic list ready in your mind just like having a mind map and you know what are we going to discuss and what are the branches of the topic so you know okay we are discussing ovarian tumors okay you don't know anything about ovarian tumors that's why you're in the lecture for but you should at least know the categorization that there are three types of ovarian tumors so when the teacher is discussing this particular type you know okay now we are on this part and now i'm going to study this so that way you'll understand the lecture more and you'll start loving what the teacher is teaching you now i know that these days we have online classes and you can basically google everything while you are you know having or taking the lecture but still try to read the topics at least the headings subheadings the important words before you enter the lecture and you'll see the difference it makes another important point for this is when you read the topic beforehand and then the teacher explains you will catch the high yield stuff that the teacher is trying to explain it to you because you've read the topic and now the teacher is just explaining the points she thinks that are important for the explanation of the topic so you'll catch what is high yield and what is low yield so when you read the topic again after the lecture you'll know okay the teacher focused more on this so i should also focus more on this and this might be relevant for the exams so you'll catch these high yield materials if you know what are you studying and what are you doing in the lecture hall because you already have studied that part the fifth study habit you should implement is revising every day now most people do having a first run of all the subjects and then they go back and revise everything while you have studied the first subject or the second subject or let's say first topic and second topic and when you're moving to the third topic you've already forgotten most of the first topic so what is the use you just have to revise every day if you revise every day then you won't be forgetting the information that you've learned a good way to do this is flashcards and what i recommend is anki now i already have two videos on anki how to use it what is it and i'll link it right up here and also in the description box below and i also recently did a podcast with the anking if you know him and you should check out that podcast if you want to know more about anki and how to use it daily in your life Also I've covered five effective study techniques you should implement and I know I'm referring you to other videos but I have actually covered these revision techniques but I still put up this picture here which you can see these five study techniques so these are basically the study techniques which have active recall in them by active recall you can recall the information better and not passively reading it and not retaining basically anything now active recall is difficult but it helps you much much more so definitely check that video out if you haven't number 6 on my list is active learning so i was talking about how you should revise every day and for sure you should not be revising by reading a book or reading the topic which you've already studied that's a passive way of revising you should use methods like recalling where the book is closed having or making a mind map using a find men technique doing flash cards or giving cue banks and tests so these are basically the five effective research based study techniques i've already made a video about it so i won't elaborate it further if you are interested in knowing more about these study techniques definitely click that video i'll put the link in the description and also up here and once you start active recall you'll never go back you'll find it hard and because it's hard it helps you much much more so definitely when you're revising do it by active recall and not by passively reading the topic
Number seven on my list is doing questions or Q banks every day. Now let's say you've studied the topic and you feel you're very well prepared to take the exam. But in the exam, you're like, okay, I, I had studied this, but what are they trying to ask? I, I don't understand. This is because you haven't really applied what you've studied. So the application pillar or the application part of your study is missing. And how can you do that is by actually, for example, if you're a medical student, by actually seeing the patients that's applying your knowledge in the clinical field. And if you're a student, uh, you should go do question banks, which gives you scenarios like this, like a patient comes to you and presents with epigastric pain, etc., etc. Now you've already studied the information and this will help you apply that knowledge to the question and help you answer the question. Now you might get these questions wrong. This is practice and practicing every day will make the application pillar so strong that when you actually see those questions in the exam, you would have gone through that scenario so many times that you'll know the answer almost instantaneously. You'll see this yourself. When you start doing questions every day, in the start you'll take a lot of time to do the questions and it'll be very tough but as and when, let's say, one or two months have passed by, you'll be asking questions at a much faster rate and also getting the classic scenarios which uh, the examiners usually ask. And this is a big, big plus if you're preparing for um, common entrance exams like NEET PG, NEXT, USMLE, PLAB, UKMLA, whatever. Number eight on my list is dividing the tougher tasks into small parts. Now, if you've seen a day in my life video, you'll see I'm doing Anki throughout the day, but I'm just doing 25 minutes each. Now, I use Anki to recall everything and Anki is actually very taxing to the brain. So if you do Anki for like one, one and a half hour, your brain is like fried. Actually, mine is literally fried and I cannot do Anki for one and a half hours. So it's a tough task for me. So what I do is I divide this into many smaller tasks and I do them throughout the day. So let's say I wake up in the morning and I do an Anki session of 20 minutes and then I do it in the evening or in the afternoon, but I focus on doing smaller tasks of a bigger task. Now for you, this might be anything else. This might be a difficult topic you just cannot study or this might be a very tough to memorize topic like microbiology or biochemistry and if you study that for let's say one two hours straight your brain gets a little bit fried so try dividing those topics throughout the day and you'll see you'll be good to go and also you'll get a sort of revision throughout the day because you'll when you start the next page or the next topic you'll briefly go through okay i studied this in my previous session so that's like a little cherry on the cake but yeah try to divide your tougher tasks into small parts and do them throughout the day number nine on my list is discussing the topics before an exam with a friend now why would i say that you discuss topics with a friend now this is called the Feynman technique and i've told you this is an active way of recalling all the things you've studied now when you discuss the topics with your friend you're actually trying to recall all the topics you've studied and trying to put it on a plate for your friend to analyze it like if you're doing it right or wrong so discussing with a friend helps you a lot if you're saying for example something wrong your friend can analyze that and correct you if you're saying everything right then well you just got one more round of revision because you actively recalled it and told that to your friend and vice versa if you're listening to your friend's answer you're actually also thinking okay i also studied this i studied this here so this is also a passive way of revision but yeah this is also going through a topic once again the 10 study habit i want you to implement is actually not to study what do i mean now what i mean by this is you need some time off now you might ask me superb how is this productive like you're saying you should not study to study better this is like a counterproductive thing to do Trust me, your mind needs a break. Your body needs a break. You need to relax sometimes. All work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. So make sure you schedule in those breaks or anything you like to do, you want to relax. Just let your body decide. You want to go out, play, go out, play. You want to have a nice fancy dinner, 
go and do that whatever you want to do do it in those one or two days if you can't afford one or two days at least at least schedule one or like half a day off it will immensely help you and you'll thank me later well that was it for me if you like this video then click that thumbs up button and if you absolutely loved it then just smash that subscribe button and as always stay healthy stay safe and stay mad but just about medicine and i'm gonna go relax because it's my relax day bye